Right, everybody, let's finish up this last example on lesson six here. So a polynomial function has this equation, uh, p of x equals x minus 4x plus 3x plus 6. If you recall from 20-1 and quadratic functions, we can find the x-intercepts or the zeros, which is where y is 0, by taking that equation and going 0 equals x minus 4, one second, x minus 4, x plus 3, and x plus 6. And then since it's factored already, we can set each factor to 0. x minus 4 equals 0, so x would equal 4. And do the same thing here, so that x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 6. Those are the original zeros, or x-intercepts, of our original polynomial function. So I'm just going to summarize that here. 4, negative 3, negative 6. Okay, now y-intercept. To find a y-intercept, we basically know that x is equal to 0 for y-intercept. So if we take our original function and go p at 0, put in 0 for x, 0 minus 4, 0 plus 3, and 0 plus 6, and then simplify, that'd be 0 minus 4, negative 4, times positive 3, times positive 6 is going to be negative 72 is our y-intercept of the original polynomial function. Okay, we needed to do that because now we're going to look at these transformations and how it changes the original zeros and y-intercept. Okay, so first transformation, A, y equals negative 3p of x. Okay, so you'll notice p of x is like f of x and it's just like your whole function y. Okay, so first of all, you notice there's a 3 and there's a negative. Those are two different transformations. The 3 is a stretch, vertical stretch, by a factor of, now the question is, is it 3 or 1 third? The 3 isn't with the y, okay? Oh, first of all, how did we know it was vertical? Well, it wasn't inside with the x, so therefore it's vertical, not horizontal. So back to how do we know if it's 3 or 1 third? The 3 is not over here with the y. It's over here. So therefore, we do not reciprocal the factor, and it would be a vertical stretch, or the coefficient, I mean. It would be a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. There we go. Okay, and the negative is a reflection. So a reflection over the, now it's not with the x, so it's with the y essentially. Um, so if y goes negative, the point would reflect over the x-axis. Okay, so given those transformations, what would happen to our graph? Um, if we stretch vertically, let's do a quick sketch of our original. So we've got 4, negative 3, negative 6, and a y-intercept of negative 72 way down there. So we probably have something like this. Okay, might not be exactly that. But if we stretch vertically by a factor of 3 about the x-axis, these x-intercepts, which are on the x-axis, won't change, right? If they stretch vertically, we multiply the y-coordinates, right? And these y-coordinates are all 0. So 0 times 3, still 0. Okay, so the new zeros are actually the same as the old zeros, which would be 4, negative 3, and negative 6. Or we could write those as coordinates, 4, 0, negative 3, 0, negative 6, 0. Okay, now the y-intercept. Okay, both of these transformations up here affect y. Vertical stretch, that's y. Reflection over the x-axis, again, that's y. So negative 72, if we take that point, 0, negative 72, and we vertically stretch by a factor of 3, that point would become negative 72 times 3, which would be negative 216, I believe. Okay, and then we reflect over the x-axis, so our y-coordinate would change sign, 0, comma, positive 216. And there we go. Our new y-intercept is equal to, or will now be, 0, comma, 216. Okay, make sense? All right, why don't you guys try B, um, and we'll check back and see if we have the same answer. So pause your video. Okay, how'd we do? First of all, the 1 half in front of x, that's a horizontal because it's with the x. It's with the x, so we need to flip that to get our horizontal stretch factor. Horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. 
reflection because of the negative sign. It's with the x, so think if we reflect and make the x go opposite signs, we'd be reflecting in the y-axis. Okay, so let's see what it affects. If we take our old zeros, 4, 0, negative 3, 0, negative 6, 0, and we horizontally stretch by a factor of 2, our x-coordinates are going to get multiplied by 2. So 4 becomes 8, etc. Then we reflect in the y-axis, and the x's would go opposite signs. Okay, so there's our new zeros. Our y-intercept, there were no vertical transformations on this one. So our old y-intercept, same as our new y-intercept, 0, comma, negative 72. Now, you'll notice on this one, if we were to write this as a mapping with a coordinate point, Okay, what did we do to the x? When we horizontally stretched it by a factor of 2, what did we do to the x coordinate? We multiplied it by 2, right? Okay, so that would be written as like 2x comma y. Then we reflected it in the y axis, which changed the sign of the x coordinate to the opposite of what it was. So for mapping, we'd put a negative in front of the uh, 2x. And there you go. That is like the secret mapping notation to get from a coordinate on the original to a coordinate on the transformed graph. Okay. Why don't you guys try doing the mapping notation for part A and pause your video and then we'll check back and we'll see if we have the same answer. And then we'll be done the video after that. So pause your video, try to do the mapping notation for the um, for that ordered pair x comma y. Okay, so did everybody get that the point x comma y changed to x comma negative 3y? Okay, nothing was done to the x because there were no horizontal transformations, but we stretched vertically by a factor of 3, so we'd multiply our y coordinates by 3, and then we reflected in the x, so opposite signs, so that's why it's negative 3y. Okay, so there you go. That's how you set up the ordered pair mapping notation. All right. Great job. Tackle that assignment in class tomorrow, you guys. You're doing great. And we'll see you then.